Hello class! So today, we'll be talking and learn about how living things reproduce. So, are you excited to learn how living things reproduce? Okay, if you're interested, follow and listen with me so that you will know and learn about how living things reproduce. Are you ready? Let's go! Okay, I have here a picture of a female and a male cat with their baby cat or what we call kitten. So, in your own idea, okay class, um, in what way does the baby kitten was made? Do you have any guess or idea about how it is made? Okay, so, we will start our discussion with how animals reproduce. Okay, from the word reproduction, let us learn what is reproduction first. Reproduction is the process of creating an organism of the same kind. Living things differ in the way they reproduce. Okay, so, production is the process of creating a new organism with the same kind. But, because we will be focusing on how living things reproduce, now, let's move on. The first type of reproduction, which is the most common type, which is the sexual reproduction. So, what is sexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction involves a female sex cell and a male sex cell. Let's look at this example. We have here a picture of a man and a woman and two cells and then a baby. So, let's look back at this second picture, which is the cells. What do you think are these? These are cells. Okay, the first one, which is the round shape, is what we call the egg cell. And then the second one, which has the same shape like a snake or a tadpole, is what we call the sperm cell. If these two cells unites or if the sperm cell meets the egg cell it will fertilize the egg cell and what happens when the egg cell is already fertilized then a new organism or cell will be reproduced and then it will it will then develop into a zygote after months of developing this fertilized egg cell what happens is there will be a zygote and then after nine months a baby will come out from the mother's womb okay then let's clarify first what is fertilization okay let's learn what is fertilization let's read fertilization occurs when an egg cell or the ova which is produced only by a female organism and a sperm cell which is also produced by a male organism takes place but there are two types of fertilization. These are the internal and the external. So we notice that in each peak, there is a mother who is carrying her baby inside her womb. And the other one is a mother is producing her eggs outside or in the environment. So the first pick is the internal fertilization and then the second pick is obviously external fertilization. Is it clear? Okay, let's proceed. So what is internal fertilization? Internal fertilization occurs inside a female organism by the male organism delivering sperm to her. This is obviously seen where one organism is carrying and taking care of its unborn baby inside her. Okay? So, in humans, the organism that is carrying by one person or one organism is what we call the fetus or the baby. And can you give me an example, class, of an organism which fertilizes their egg internally okay okay let me give you an example first uh, I would 
choose dog because it is a mammal then usually mammals produces baby inside their womb okay how about you okay. i will give you three seconds to think got one already okay save your answers for later now i have here another set of pictures in the first picture we see here a flower and then the second one is a leaf with fragments growing in its outside part of the leaf the third picture is a picture of a starfish which lost two legs but still it grows after time so there's no problem if he would lost his two legs because it will still grow so now that is an example of a sexual reproduction now let's focus more on a sexual reproduction so let us know first what is a sexual reproduction let's read together a sexual reproduction is a kind of reproduction where offsprings arise from a single parent and not sexual it doesn't require both male and female reproductive cells they are clones or copy of their parents okay so from the description that we have read earlier a sexual reproduction is a mode of reproduction that does not entail the union of sex cells or gametes so it doesn't involve two parents and only one parent unlike the sexual reproduction which wherein male and female is necessary in order to produce a new organism so let's try to look at these other examples okay here we have a potato crop the second one is the ginger crop okay the third one is the katakataka plant or leaf now i want you to get a notebook or any paper where you can write and list the observations that you found in these pictures i will give you 10 seconds to write the most obvious details that you can see in each crop okay your timer starts now Are you done? Okay. Now, we have seen in the first picture, the camote crop or the sweet potato crop has a fragment or a leaf growing. And now class, we can see here in the second picture, which is the ginger crop, that it is branching out. And while the third one, which is the katakataka leaves, there are fragments growing on the side of the leaf where if we took that out it can still grow and not die now this process is called vegetative reproduction let us know more what is vegetative reproduction let us read together vegetative reproduction means in which a new plant grows from a fragment of the parent plant examples are stem roots and leaves in many plants vegetative reproduction is a completely natural process now class let me give you more knowledge about a sexual reproduction in this picture here we can see a bee getting close to a nectar of a flower and in this nectar we can see pollen grains the bees will suck the nectar of a flower and what happens the pollen grains will stick to the bee's butt and the pollen grains where the bee is bringing will be carried away with the air so that what happens the pollen grain will <coughs> enter the stigma of a flower which happens a also a production of a new flower and then if the pollen grain enters the stigma 
it will go to the ovules or the egg cell of a flower and then it will reproduce a new seed and now what is a seed so seed is a fertilized ovule and contains the embryo and a food store uh, for the developing embryo now i have here a new picture to show for you class okay what do you see with this picture here it is a dog very good it is a dog so can you see that the dog has a fur hair yes obviously it has a fur and hair do you think the dog came from the egg or it is born already with legs and a body yes very good it is so this type of animal is a mammal how about this one here which is the frog so does the frog has hair or fur no so a frog doesn't have a hair or a fur have you seen frog in real life yes so frog has no fur but a sticky and a slimy skin because in their skin that is where the oxygen enters their body okay. but now let us move on to vertebrates and invertebrates here i have here a picture of the dog again so do you think a dog has a backbone class yes a dog has a backbone so that is the first or the obvious sign what a vertebrae means or if an organism is a vertebrae and then the second one here is we have starfish a spider and a snail so do you think these organisms or living thing has a backbone are you sure okay so these living things which are the snail the spider and the starfish has no backbone so we call them invertebrate okay very good very easy right so now so what again are the vertebrates vertebrates are an organism or an animal which has backbone correct and how about invertebrates so it doesn't have a backbone that is the obvious meaning for these two types of animals invertebrates has no backbones very good okay. Okay. before we go on to our activity I have here a last what animal can you see here in these pictures Fishes, correct. And what are the fishes doing here? They are hugging. Okay. They they are close to each other, right? And what about the other fish? It is taking care of her eggs. Okay. And how about in these other pictures? This is a picture of a mother cat and her kittens. So, what do you think are the differences of these two types of animals? Compared to the fish, the fish releases her eggs first in the environment and the cat is bringing or carrying her baby inside her womb because here the fish releases her egg in order to be fertilized by the male fish so while well, the cat the baby inside her tummy it is a form from an egg cell which is fertilized also from a sperm cell so the difference here is the fish processes an external fertilization while the cat or the mama cat 
processes and internal fertilization okay so so let us know more what is external fertilization external fertilization takes place when the female cells are released into the environment and the male cells are released onto them this occurs with many aquatic organisms such as fish and frogs so external fertilization are common to aquatic organisms which are fishes and frogs okay, because it, they releases their eggs first in order to be fertilized by the male organism okay understood is it clear class very good so now what are two types of reproduction the sexual and yes sexual very good and how about the two types of fertilization internal and the external very good now do you think reproduction is the creation of a new organism or the process of creating a new organism yes it is so now i think you're all ready to answer this activity here that teacher kyla will give to you have you understood our lesson today okay. that's good to hear so now i will expect that you will answer this activity well and please bring this knowledge while you're answering your activity okay good luck